Welcome, friends. This is Archangel. So the making of a devaluation MGTOW Avenger goes a little something like this. I was born male. This means, like all other males, I was a Ferrari, tricked into believing myself a beat-up old farm truck, who then sat around wishing he could be a Ferrari. So exalted, benevolent, beautiful angels would grace me and sit in my driver's seat. Anyhow, because I was born male, I was ultimately born a shovel to serve the true royalty of the human race. And inevitably, I was denied affection and approval from these goddesses as a tactic of behavior training and manipulation in order to compel me to take a saddle and a bit into my mouth. Thus females denied me free, unadulterated affection. Ignorantly and naively, I assumed I was not favored by female kind because I was aesthetically objectionable, ugly and muscularly inconsequential. I was oblivious to reality that males are shovels. Females only care about a male's utility, and hence they do not care about males' looks, only their protection and provision, their utility production. Why would females care about what their brooms or rakes look like? Just do what you're supposed to do, and then get out of sight. That's why it is common to see supermodels with Donald Trumps. Anyhow, to my pre-red pill understanding and reasoning, I assumed that affection would follow an upgrade of my curb appeal. Long story short, I changed my physique through weight training, and eventually, I found my way into stripping. <laughs> Yes. Now, whether it was from enhanced confidence or because of females' tendency to covet and pursue what other females desire, either way, I suddenly found myself on females' radar. I went from female affection starvation to affection inundation. I went from freezing temperatures to sultry heat like that. Of course, the flies and vultures come out when there is roadkill and leeches come out of the woodwork when you are deemed hot, in-demand property. Otherwise, you are simply a nondescript shovel to feed a tax machine. Yet being on females' radar, being in-demand, in whatever way, gave me my avenging superpowers. I had the gold, and I made the rules. Females pursued me and jumped to my whims. Yet this sudden attention inundation from females was too little, too late. I had already begun choking down red pills over gynocentrism, hypergamy, and male devaluation. I was damaged by male devaluation, and so I twisted female solicitation into my using them for the sake of using them. I saw myself as a vengeful avenger, giving females a taste of their own medicine for all the times I and every other male had been abused, then discarded. For all the time we, as a sex, have been used for utility and protection, then tossed aside to die for female benefit. My time as a male avenger was also a course, a learning experience, into human behavior and motivations. If given certain circumstances and proper conditions, humans run on autopilot and reptilian instincts. I am a very feeling and compassionate being who has transcended primitive instincts. I have turned my back completely on procreation, which most people do not or cannot do. They simply follow their biological imperatives. I consider myself caring and fair, and I do not wish harm on anyone, aside from a good butt whooping for a person's own good. Yet during this period, even I held my conscience for ransom as I pursued my vendetta against the malevolent sex. I have been abused because of my sex. Then when the opportunity presented itself for females to solicit attention from me, I reverted from enlightened nice guy to jaded pirate bent on revenge because of the environment. This is how I can generalize female nature and fall asleep at night soundly, trusting in the accuracy of such observations because I am acutely familiar with human nature, which is to get ahead on someone else's dime. Females may be endowed with higher morality capability, yet still, if given the right environment, they will revert to basal instincts and coast on autopilot, and an environment where males will do everything, including die, for females, 
is the fruitful soil in which females cease to develop higher functions or compassions and settle for the usurping of male utilities and taking full advantage of the entitlements offered females while becoming greedy and demanding more and more and when you're done with that how about you give just a little bit more you worthless knuckle-dragging mouth-breathing grunting primate I also realize that because of this environment, females will not change unless compelled to, as in men turning their backs on females and hence females rethinking their behavior and treatment of males upon the stark realization that they depend upon males for their very existence. At first, I let females throw themselves at me and do things for me because I was playing catch up from years of being neglected by females. Then, as the red pills circulated through my system and I recognized female nature belying every female action, deed, or word that they only did for me because they wanted utility from me, it was a courtship dance to entrance me so that they may turn the tables and have me protect and provide for them once I was hooked on their drug, romantic affection. Thus, females throwing themselves at me was part of their agenda to court me which was conducive to the master plan to break this wild bad boy stripper and compel him to stop his whinnying and bucking enough to accept a saddle and a bit like every other male the more i recognized this the more i gagged my conscience over using females and treating them less than hospitably as i decided to fight fire with fire Looking back, I am not proud that I callously manipulated others, regardless of who they were. On the other hand, I manipulated females who indifferently use males for their labor and lives. And if anybody deserved a taste of their own medicine, it was females. And on that note, I took pleasure in the fair play turnabout. Still, I am better than that. I am better than treating others in an ill fashion. I felt, however, I was an avenger for the male collective by repaying collective female usury and manipulation in kind. I did not use females for sex. <laughs> Please. In fact, I never slept with any of these females that I teased with sex by leading them on while I usurped labor and materials from them. I absolutely compelled them to lavish me with money, gifts, labor, and all the while they begged me for attention. Yeah, I know this all sounds highly improbable, that females would beg any male, let alone me, for sex, or would pamper me. But I was there. For years, beautiful females of all creeds and backgrounds threw themselves at me, and I did not have sex with any of them. People might ponder, if I had it so good, why am I involved in male liberation or MGTOW? If the gravy train was that good, why am I not still aboard? Well, for one, as I stated, this sudden inundation of female attention and solicitation came after I had started taking red pills and saw these smiling Cheshire cats for what they truly are. So my milk was already spoiled. And two, superficial associations and manipulations for personal greed is truly a shallow existence. Three, the plight of males being used and discarded by the millions every second of every minute of every day. This is unacceptable, and I feel a higher calling to rail against male devaluation and disposability. I feel an indescribable fire within me to engage gynocentrism. I am not the type who can board himself up in the castle and gorge on turkey legs and wine while the hundreds of thousands of peasants outside the walls starve. Still, for many years, I was Vlad the Impaler running through my sword of righteousness upon my adversary. So, with enthusiasm, I treated many uterine possessors less than favorably. And the more they did for me, the more I demanded. This is how I understand the insatiable female demand for ever-increasing male utility and prostration. I understand female nature after years of observation and epiphany congruent with MGTOW philosophy. I have literally had dozens upon dozens upon dozens of females get butt-naked before me and beg me to take them. Yes, beg. 
and every time I denied them, I pictured a pitiful, nondescript male out there in the world somewhere who was being played and discarded by some female, and then I focused on the waves of millions of males being chewed up and spit out by the collective feminine, and my resolve would coalesce sharper than it had been the moment previous. Females would do my chores, some would do them naked, and I would simply deny them affection while telling them all the spots that they missed. Females traveled from other cities or states to cook and clean for me and bring me gifts, again and again, and every time I would deny them the affection that they thought I might give them or that I had teased them with on the phone. One gal traveled clear across the country on her own dime after seeing my picture on the internet. She came here of her own volition, of her own means, and I had another female go and pick this girl up from the airport three hours away in another city. And then the hopeful traveler took me out everywhere and coddled me for the week that she was here, after which I sent her back to the airport without even having touched her. My friend got so flustered with me because she was hot and kinky and he watched me play her. It wasn't so much I was manipulating her that he took issue with, but rather that I was not indulging in the seven days of Greek orgy that this girl from across the country had flown here to offer me. Other females have paid bills for me, bought my dog toys and treats and food. Others did my grocery shopping and would leave the groceries on my doorstep or put cards with money or gift cards in them under my windshield wipers. I would give females a list of items to fetch for me from the store, and when they would deliver my demands, rather than thank them, I would make up something that they missed, just to mess with them. One gal took me to a posh ski resort for the weekend. I didn't even take my wallet. She took me to some romantic dinner on Saturday night while we were there, and we were the only people in the restaurant. Then later, in the hotel, she got naked and begged me to take her. My response? <laughs> yeah, I turned on the TV and I told her to quiet down. Other girls would get naked at all hours of the day, such as on their lunch break, and stick their boobs or vagina in my face. And I would just roll my eyes. They would beg me to get naked for them, and I refused every time, which only seemed to fuel their desire to see me in my birthday suit. I had females feed, wash, and groom me, tuck me into bed and tell me stories or sing to me. Then I would remind them to turn off the lights and lock the front door as they were leaving to go home and sleep in their own bed, not mine. One female lived in another city, yet she brought me her car, her only transportation, for me to drive around, and I already had three other cars at the time. Females have lied, cheated, and stolen, even assaulted others, for me. And these were attractive females, not hillbilly trolls. You see, I am extremely picky when it comes to female physical appearance, and I will not waste my time with females that I am not completely attracted to. Many of my friends, many times, would have liked to have thrown me a beating because they watched me so indifferently use hot chicks without consummating a single association. This is over a period of many years, in many different parts of the country. Yet, I had a different agenda. Sex? <laughs> Who cares? Sex is a useless, temporary, transient enjoyment. It's just three seconds of feel-good. It is ephemeral, not hard currency. Having intercourse with a hot chick is easy. Bad boys and playas brag about it every minute on Facebook or Twitter. Yet, getting a hot chick to buy you a car? <laughs> that is talent. By this time, I had lived enough to realize that males were utilities to females and the feminine collective, and that females, for their part, do not care about males nor their welfare. And although I didn't know words existed, I was aware of hypergamy and gynocentrism before this terminology had presented itself to me and I was MGTOW before I had been formally introduced to like-minded males. I have been far beyond the illusion of female benevolence and tender fragility for quite some time now, and I am aware of females for the opportunists they are. 
I was simply applying the same usury to them that they applied to naive, unsuspecting males. I mean, they're equal, right? Good for the goose, good for the gander, right? I could not have cared about sex any less. I was on a mission to effect some sort of cosmic justice onto the collective feminine. What goes around comes around, yes? Well, I was the come around to females for the hurt they inflicted either willingly or unconsciously onto males. And I have seriously had dozens upon dozens of strikingly attractive females pander to me all the while I did not get naked or sleep with a single one. In fact, I feel empowered, and I am exceedingly impressed with the strength and control that I exhibited in the face of such hot, young, supple female carnality. Oh, I was absolutely attracted to and turned on by each of them. I took pride in, and I seemed to have a talent for getting females naked and dripping wet to the point where they fogged up mirrors. I remained fully clothed and I would completely shut them down. Oh, oh, well, thanks for coming over. Time for me to go to bed, so you need to leave. And hey, when you come over tomorrow, I need this, that, and the other thing. Bye. They would beg or try to tie me up and take the sex that I teased them with, or they would take my hand and place it on their vulva or clitoris in hopes that I might concede. Nope. I've had females live in other cities, take the kid to the sitters, call in sick to work, lie to the family, lie to the husband, and come visit me, and simply tag along as I chased parts from a salvage yard and then worked on the car. I won't get into specifics, but all these things took place in different parts of the country over various years. This is not me bragging, and nobody has to believe anything. I am not here to fish for ego stroking or high fives from others. I simply relay this in juxtaposition to my videos entitled Agent Smith, where I describe how pathetically dependent upon female validation I was for the initial parts of my life. So I simply recount all these things to make a point. I have been all around this creature that we call the human female. Every angle, every observational platform. I have begged females for attention, and I have been begged by females for attention. I have pampered, and I have been pampered. I have served, and I have been served. So I have a very generous experiential data pool and base to draw from in my conclusion on the human animal. Interestingly enough, gazillions of males around the world have come to the same conclusions as I with my polarizingly varied background. Males are seeing MGTOW as the only humane recourse for male devaluation and disposability. I realize otherwise good, caring, compassionate humans can override compassion and conscience in order to use and manipulate others, especially when they have been mistreated themselves. Furthermore, when someone solicits and pampers and coddles you, it is easier to see them as utilities of labor or provision, devoid of feelings or worth, much like humans view cattle. And having a taste of what females lavished upon me, which pales in comparison to what the collective masculine lavishes upon the collective feminine, I understand how females can bypass conscience and view and treat males as expendable utilities. Yes, females are capable of higher loving and concern, care and compassion. Yet the entitled, coddled, pampered environment that we treat females with does not compel them to develop further this higher capability. Then, on top of that, females are biologically wired to use males for protection and provision. Males never had a chance to be cared or loved by females in this physical mortality. The moral of the story is this. Females do not care about male welfare. They have no instinctual room for male compassion, and they have no incentive for compassion from a moral platitude. Not that anyone should need incentive to do the right thing or treat others in kind. That is, until males begin walking away from females and leaving them to their own self-interest. Then, females might find some modicum of appreciation for males, in hindsight. Males are all alone. Females cannot, do not, and have not 
any incentive to care about male welfare or worth. Were you born with a Y chromosome? Then you are and always will be a utility, a means to an end for females despite any and all contrary claptrap. Males are shovels. Shovels who I mean to liberate from servitude. I am not particularly proud of this period where I indifferently used females. Because I am a better person, I am compassionate and caring of all. I absolutely wish females the best in life. My friends, stand with me. Live free.